Okay, hi, I'm Nate Richards. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Kent County Ag Agent. Um, and I'm gonna give a shorter presentation, um, uh, update on some of the data we got from 2017 and a little bit about what we've seen in 2018. Um, so starting off, I'm gonna give a little introduction on cover crops and kind of what our uh, philosophy and mindset was when we started this, uh, this research project. I also want to give recognition to uh, Northeast SARE. They were a grant funder for this research, um, and I'll also be mentioning the collaborators as we go on. Um, so cover crops, we use them in Maryland. Uh, a big point of that is to uh, reduce nitrogen loss um, that goes into the bay. And um, principles of this research project, we want to um, uh, utilize the four R's. So we want to, we, we're using a reduced tilled system. Um, we want to increase our fertilizer use efficiency, and that's by the source of uh, nitrogen we're using, um, where we're placing it, the rate, and the timing. And lastly, our usage of cover crops. So um, cover crop services, we have a number of them, and basically, the services you get depend on three main things. Um, the management of your cover crop, the cover crop species you use, and your soil and climate. So in this research project, we decided we're gonna use grasses and specifically cereal rye. The reason for that is geographical adaptability, winter hardiness, and low cost of seed. And those three factors make it the most widely used cover crop. So in our deciding to use that as the main driver for our um, research, we thought, what are most people going to be able to adapt to um, without ma making a huge change to their operation? So grasses, they have tremendous end scavenging. They have erosion control, weed suppression, growth limited by soil N. So they're not fixating nitrogen. They're not loading nitrogen into the soil. They're only cycling what's already there. Um, they have lower tissue N concentration, um, which means a higher CN ratio. Um, one of the pitfalls with grasses is you can have an N immobilization um, environment. And I can talk about that more. And lastly, um, they're great scavengers, so they reduce end leaching. So when we have these grasses, one thing we know is as we add quantity and quality, um, we increase these services. So if we have a small cover crop, um, it's not going to have as great control for erosion, water infiltration, soil organic matter weeds. Uh, but as we increase that biomass, we can increase the services that you get from it. And this is an example here. Um, early termination of a cover crop. This was grown seven months. It was terminated in, um, let me see if I got, there we go. So it was terminated um, in early March. And you can see it's not that big. It's about ankle height. Um, grown one extra month. Um, we got approximately 2.5 times more biomass. And looking at our averages for what type of ranges we have here, um, the early kill we saw was um, just around tillering. And you can see these ranges of pounds of biomass per acre. Um, and what I want to highlight here is you have a corresponding C to N ratio. And that C to N ratio is important because that kind of determines uh, how much nitrogen will be available. When you increase the C to N ratio, that becomes immobilized and it won't mineralize as quickly, making that nitrogen tied up. That nitrogen that it pulled from the ground won't be available. So um, what Mark told us in the first, um, in the first talk is um, optimal uh, weed suppression starts at about 4,000 pounds. So we can see 4,000 pounds isn't until your cover crop, at least in the grass category, has reached um, anthesis 
or um, boot stage. And we can see here, this is kind of what I'm talking about as far as um, mineralization and mobilization. When you get above 20 to 1, you start getting into this low nitrogen environment. So what a lot of farmers tell me when they're growing a cover crop, they like to terminate earlier because they don't want a yield drag. And that yield drag is driven by a low nitrogen environment. So um, looking at the critical need, how can we increase the services of a bigger cover crop without having a negative effect on uh, the cash crop that we grow? So we want to grow bigger cover crops to increase their services, to, um, to increase soil health, and um, we know that producers use split applications of nitrogen. So that goes back to our four R's, our um, right timing. So we know that approximately 50% of nitrogen gets taken up between the VT and the V8 stage, or R1 stage, sorry. Um, so most, most uh, producers are doing split applications for that reason. Um, and then lastly, um, more mature cereal cover crops have a greater seed down ratio. So this is a graph from MDA, and um, what we see here is the planting of cover crops in the Maryland Cover Crop Program and the termination. And um, what I really want to show here, this is termination um, in early March. So most producers are terminating in early March. And what that's showing is there's tremendous opportunity to push that date later um, and increase the services of cover crops because a lot of, a lot of farmers are terminating early March. Um, if they delay a couple weeks, we can push that, that graph that way a little bit to the right. So about the, uh, the study that we started in 2017, um, we did this study in two locations, um, one at the Y Research Center and another one at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. Um, also want to give credit to the agronomy crew that helped out with this, both at the Y and at Bark. It, it was a lot to take on, and uh, I know some of them are here today, so thank you. Um, in 2018, we got grant funding, and we brought in some collaborators. Um, Mark Van Gessel's one um, at University of Del Delaware. We also have uh, University of Massachusetts, Cornell, Penn State, and um, uh, North Carolina. So going back to what I was talking about, this immobilization issue, we want to determine the right prescription for your starter side dress application. Um, so we know that going into a bigger cover crop, there's limitations because of a low nitrogen environment, but we want to determine how can we adjust our starter side dress application rate to compensate for that, to mitigate that issue. So what we hypothesize is if we increase the starter end rate at a proportional amount decreasing the side dress rate, we can properly prescribe a nitrogen program that can mitigate the low, low uh, nitrogen environment from a large cover crop and still see the increased effects. So this is a little bit about the methodology. We use the split plot design um, and our cover crop management. So we have um, three different kill dates. So we want to we get a gradient of cover crop sizes going into the cash crop. So we did an early kill uh, that was at tillering. We did an inter intermediate kill that was um, boot to stem elongation. And we did a late kill at anthesis. And then we did two different nitrogen programs. We had um, 150 pounds of total N and then 210 pounds of total N. And the reason for that, we wanted a, an average yielding environment and a high yielding environment. And then 
we had four starter rates. We had zero, 25, 50, and 75. We went all the way up to 75. Um, most folks said that 75 might be getting a little bit too high where you, you'll be burning the seed. Um, in two years of doing the study, we haven't seen that yet. So it's been pretty successful. Um, I also want to add um, the application. We did two by two using UAN. Um, we also used a urease inhibitor um, because of having the, the high biomass. So two by two using UAN um, for starter, and then for side dress, we dribbled on through the middle of the rows. Nate, not to interrupt you, but, yep. back, but your numbers don't add up to 150. Which one? I'll, I'll fix those ones. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know whether that's what you actually No, did. that's that's not correct. Okay. So this should be 25, 125. You know what happens? All those get shifted. So I'll fix that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so some of the metrics that we took, we did a soil test. Uh, soil fertility test, um, we took cover crop biomass, uh, pre-side dress, corn biomass, leaf area index, um, we did crop populations, corn yields, and lastly we did NDVI measurements. Um, so the reason it's really important to do multiple years of these uh, studies is because you get uh, a big difference between the uh, growing seasons and um, just looking at rain, we know we had a big difference between 2017 and 2018. Um, what I want to highlight is um, the April and May months between 2017 and 2018. Um, it's quite a bit different, especially in May, um, and that was right around planting time. Um, one of the big things I hear about planting into a big cover crop is um, uh, issues with the planter. In 2017, um, it worked flawlessly. We had a, a considerably drier May and planting through the high cover crop. Um, the cell walls of the, the rye were exploding. It, it planted right through the rows, no, no clogging up in the coulters. In 2018, that was a bigger issue. If we had planted into it green, we might not have seen that problem because the material would not have gotten so ropey. Um, so being able to adapt based on the weather um, is a key thing for, for doing uh, a larger cover crop planting. So I think in um, hindsight, um, in 2018, we would, have, uh, we would have planted it green instead of killed it two weeks before planting. But you never know how, how wet it's going to be, so that's, that's, always, that's always an issue. Another thing to note in 2018, this is another thing we saw um, because it was so wet, uh, sprouting corn. Um, not much we could have done, but like I said, a, a, a big difference in those between the two years. So starting off with the study, this is what it looked like. Um, between the, the no cover crop and the cover crop. And this is what we see with um, an early kill and a late kill. And this is what it looks like um, shortly before planting. And you can see that the early kill, there's virtually no more ground cover. It mineralizes quite quickly. Here we see um, the uh, uh, the cover crop um, biomass um, based on its location. And you can see the yellow ones are the higher biomass. Um, the darker ones are the lower biomass. And they correspond pretty evenly with their termination. This is how we took uh, cover crop samples. We did half meter square, squared quadrats. And um, these are our averages for, um, for uh, biomass at termination. And this is, sorry, this is, uh, these are averages, min and max. 
Um, I like this graph better um, because you can kind of see, um, oh, unfortunately one of the graphics hasn't showed up, but uh, you can kind of see uh, there should be a gray box here on, on all of these, but at least it shows the middle line. Um, the difference between the two locations, uh, Bark and Y, this is at um, uh, late termination, this is at early termination. So you can see Bark had significantly um, higher uh, biomass. Um, so we did a couple short videos on this and um, I might be able to play it just so you can see prior to planting the difference between um, the, uh, the biomass going into planting. So this is just a, a flyover with a drone that we did. So I'm gonna skip on. Um, so at planting, um, a big thing I hear from farmers is planting into that is um, gonna be a mess. And um, in 2018, yes, we did have issues because of the rain. Um, it was not practical to plant. And I will say that you need to be able to adapt how you're gonna do this. So um, if you get a really wet May and you have something like this, you could have a problem. Um, in 2017, not an issue at all. Um, I will say that um, in both cases, we got the planting done. 2018 was a little bit more difficult. Um, but once we did get the planting in, um, this, this height of cover crop was not an issue for uh, corn em emergence. This is what it looked like going into the, the high cover crop, the late termination. Um, it was not sunned out. Um, this is the corn emerging through the cover crop, the, the dead cover crop. Um, so it wasn't sunned out, uh, didn't have a problem coming out of it. And um, this is what it looked like by side dress. So you can see here, um, this is the early kill and there's virtually no more ground cover. Um, so by side dress time, this late kill, we have a significant ground cover that's still offering the cover crop services through the season. So the spatial variability, like when we do these treatments, we really want to see spatial variability between the treatments. And um, both years we, we saw um, just at eye level that you could see treatment responses. So that was good to see. Um, looking at this, this is um, a starter fertilizer um, showing the leaf area index. Um, so we have two dates that we took this at. And um, we, we saw responses here in the early and late for both locations. Um, and at the zero, we could see that um, there was issues to leaf berry index. So the zero starter um, had a significant um, negative response for not greening up. And we saw similar responses with NDVI Right here, we see between the first and second and third dates, we see a trend of uh, uh, the greenness going up. And at the zero starter, um, it had a negative response. This is one more video. I'm not gonna play it, but um, actually I can, I can show it real quick. It's just, once again, um, some of the treatment responses. And these are, these are just visual, but you can see that um, they're pretty significant between treatments. I have all, this, um, uh, all these videos as well as research albums with labels available and they, they go through all the treatments and show you what, what it looks like. Um, So as you can see, um, it's pretty significant between, this is all, all filmed on the same day. So the heights of the, the corn is pretty significant between the differences. 
Uh, credit to uh, the individual I did the videos with, Sam Shoge. He has a drone company in Kent County. Um, for our grain yield, we wanted to make sure that we didn't have deer pressure, so we, um, we fenced out our, um, our plots here. And we eliminated uh, any outliers based on corn po plant populations. And then we took our grain yield using a Massey Ferguson 8XP with a Harvest Master um, weigher. And looking at the grain yields between the, um, the 0, 25, 50, and 75 um, pounds of nitrogen, um, these are as a function of uh, grain yield. So you can see the, uh, the squares are your um, late and the circles are your early. And when we unpool this as a function of biomass, and once again, those graphics didn't show up. I don't know why. But um, we have these graphics that show the trend. And it's a, it should be a gray um, cloud. But what we can see here is as the biomass increases, we actually saw um, a positive effect to grain yield, except for in the case when we had uh, zero at starter. And that's where we have the negative trend line. So as I said, the research al albums are available. I put them publicly. And they have um, uh, notes attached to them as far as the treatments. And that ends it. So basically, in 2018, we have a whole bunch of data that we're going to be pooling together. And um, what we hope to get out of this is create a, a prescription plan, a nitrogen plan, for based on how much cover crop biomass you have in the field, um, what type of starter side dress um, proportion you might want to be looking at. So as Nicole said, 20 to 40 percent at starter, we want to be able to dial it in uh, where we can say, if you're at uh, 6,000 pounds of nitrogen, you should put 30%, for example. So we want to be able to um, make that prescription with the data we get from this. Any questions?